Hey, Gordy here, West Coast Saw again. I, uh, I started working on Garrett's 661 on that new cylinder. Started porting it up and I was thinking I'd do a little uh, basic video, um, kind of show you guys like a couple tips on uh, porting if you want to hear that. Just basic work saw porting. This is not any kind of race saw application and um, there is obviously a thousand ways to build one of these saws a two-stroke engine is super cool and that's what makes it so intriguing that everybody's got their own way of doing it and they all run different and you could tell somebody your numbers and everything and they could run your numbers and the thing runs completely different than the saw that you built so it's just kind of cool how the little two-stroke is it's just a an air pump is the way i look at it and um we're just changing basically it's like, it's like a camshaft in a V8. It just, you're changing the duration, the time that the intakes open, um, exhaust is getting wider or higher, which is changing RPM ranges and torque. So a lot goes into these little things and I don't wanna get super you know carried away with it, but I will like explain to you what my view is on just a little work saw build that's kind of cool. Um, if you're interested in doing a little bit of stuff on your own saw it's kind of handy to know these little basic things and necessarily you don't have to get super crazy to make it run a lot better so let me flip the camera around here and I'll kind of show you what I got here so this is my my porting bench um, it's pretty basic I got an old vise and I pretty much just cinch the old cylinder down in there and I have two Fordhams and I only have two because I accidentally had one kind of jam up and I didn't have time to fix it so I bought another one and I ended up with two and then those are ran off of a foot pedal and they're super handy because you can change different different heads on them and so forth so like this one I have a quarter inch bit in this is an eighth inch so if you're you know getting more advanced you can get the right angles or your polishing one and then i got this little guy here it's like a little tiny dental one for chamfering edges so you know things aren't sharp and so forth but yeah it's uh let's see if i can show you here just run that pedal and the further you push on the pedal, the faster it goes, which is very nice for control and getting a nice smooth um, port job in. But those are what I use. It's a Series SR Fordham. And you can get these from CC Specialties. They're a great outfit and they sell these things along with all the bits and the, the end tools and everything. I don't do a lot of porting anymore, but um, I was doing this one today, so I figured, well, I'll just kind of run through the basics of what I got here. And uh, this is some other stuff I got, little bits and crap that I've tried over the years. I kind of use these for polishing. Um, and some of these smaller ones are for my right angle. You can see how small these little guys are. These are for doing upper transfers. This here, I I bought this probably three, this one's probably three years old. I wore out the first one, but these are getting more expensive now, but um, let's see what else do I got here. Oh, my uh, air tools. I got this one here is just for chamfering edges. Um, when I get done doing the cylinder, after I cut the base of the cylinder, I'll use this thing to clean up the edge of the chrome with. Um, this here is after I get done, you know, running my bits in, I might change the, the sandpaper on this if I go coarser or finer. And then obviously you need a cutoff wheel for mufflers and there's another one to hog on mufflers with. But these are just basic, you know, air tools you can get anywhere. And uh, these bits here, I just, Luckily, I got a hardware store down the street that carries these, so I don't even have to go far to get those, but um, 
believe they're double cut quarter inch is what they think they are. Yeah, says three eighths. But anyhow, um, first thing, if you're gonna tear into a saw, you need to know where you're starting. So the best thing I can tell you to do is to build yourself a degree wheel. And these degree wheels, you can find them online. Um, they're really easy to find, super cheap. This is, uh, this is mine here. And this is a, a keyless chuck for a drill. And when I pull the, the saw apart, I'll pull the clutch drum off and I'll um, set that keyless drill right on the end of the crank. And then I'll find top dead center right there and I use a coat hanger coming off the case somewhere, find my top dead center so the piston's all the way at the top. And then I start to rotate you know, the piston down and then you find out which numbers you're on. And you do this to a bunch of saws and you start to see a rel relatively common pattern between all of the saws. And this here is your roadmap. You, you definitely need to know where you're starting and where you want to go with it. And I recommend, you know, baby steps at first. There's, you know, like I said, a million different ways to go at this thing. And it doesn't take very long to mess things up really fast with just a couple of strokes with the with the old bit over there and you are you know wasting a cylinder so good rule of thumb that i always like to think of is these are degrees so you know if that's a little degree and this wheel turns that much with your you know your porting and you're looking through with a flashlight and your pistons rotating down and you start to see light and then you look at the number and then the more that you grind up, obviously the number is going to change. So in each of these, each of these degrees is about 12 thousandths of an inch. So you can imagine a sheet of paper is like, you know, seven thousandths. So that that's probably, I don't know, five thousandths, this sheet of paper here. It's pretty thin. So it wouldn't take you very long to do a couple swipes with your with your Dremel to, to accommodate one degree of, of uh, you know, grinding. So you, you start moving around a bunch of degrees here and there and your saw is gonna run completely different and it could be worse than when you started. So I always just tell everybody to caution when you start grinding, um, definitely go on the lighter side for sure. I always grind less than more. Um, I believe in velocity and I'm building a work saw. I'm not building race saws, so that's kind of how I look at it. I just want this thing to flow and I go from there. But this is a 661 cylinder. I decked it and uh, this is the lower transfer here. And I didn't get crazy in there. I mean, there's nothing in there that's really wild. I was just making stuff flow you know the air's coming around here and transferring in making a transition i don't want sharp edges so i i just picture myself as the air flowing you know i'm making a nice transition down in there instead of you know square edges the other thing that i like to do let's see if i can get this thing to sit here And there's my exhaust port. So my exhaust ports, they look relatively factory. I, uh, I keep my exhaust ports with a half moon in them. Um, they are not flat. They, they definitely have an arch to them. And there's a reason for that. It's because of ring life. Um, if you're building a work saw and you want to get longevity out of it, and you don't want to hang a ring, the best thing you can do is make that top round like that. So when that, when that ring comes up in there, right, like, okay, the, 
let's just say the pistons traveling downward and it starts to breach it's starting to breach right there and that ring still held in by the sides and it's not just opening up all at once so the ring has a tendency to stay against that piston and then as it opens it's opening in the center and as it comes down it's getting wider that is the shapes that I try to stay to and how I get there is I'll take a piston you know a junker or a new one and I will have you know the piston there and I'll shove it up in the cylinder See if I can do this again So I'll shove that piston up into that cylinder, about like so. And then I will draw with a pencil onto that piston and I'll make sure the piston is sitting in there relatively close to where it's gonna be. I try to get it right on the money of where it's gonna sit. And then I hold the piston up in there. I draw with a pencil on the front of the piston. So I am scribed on the front of that piston. Then what I do is I'll take my pencil and I'll make these little marks on the side. And I'll show you why I do that. I, I try to hang in from the side, you know, a hundred thousandths, eighty thousandths. I try to leave myself enough room. But what those marks are, shove it back up in here. So, so this mark on this side, see how I turn the piston a little bit, you can start to see the mark. And then you kind of turn to the other side, ah, oh, this is hard to do. And you can see the mark on that side. So the piston centered in the port. The port is centered on the piston. So you're not gonna breach the outside edge. See that open up over there on that left corner? You don't want that. So what you do is you start grinding on one side and you keep shoving your piston up in there until you see that pencil mark and you start grinding on that other side you know that this side is where you you know want to be so then you could shove your piston back up and keep grinding on that corner until you see your your pencil mark on that side and you can keep shoving that piston up in there so that gives you a perfect center after you're shaped now once you're shaped and you got relatively the corners are where you want to go with it that's when i just you know barely take a little bit off the top like i said i i don't get super crazy the, the factory saw is you know pretty darn close to where you want to be you might change it a couple degrees but but that's with a lot of machining and stuff if you don't have any machining capabilities then you're kind of you're playing with fire going up on the exhaust port. So I would recommend not going up if you're uh, not a machinist and you don't have capabilities of machining the bottom as a, of these jugs or changing pistons or what. The, the port timing changes when you lower the jug down because now your jug is coming down on it. So that changes all your port timing. So if you for easy math, you took off 13 thousandths off the base. That's lowering everything in here, 13 thousandths. So with that being said, your intake is gonna go down, which you know will open earlier, which isn't a bad thing, but your exhaust port's going down. So you can counteract it by going back up. If you were to deck the cylinder, um, like if you're you know, just taking 13 thousandths off or whatever, you could go back up 13 thousandths and be back to your port number where you started let's see here what else can I go into here um, oh this is a basic question that I get a lot intakes leave them rough or make them smooth I kind of rough mine up right there I kind of make it rough and I have my exhaust smooth so I'll tell you why. I was taught that leaving the or the intake rough, it's like a boat running across the lake. So if the boat is super flat like this piece of paper and the boat's wide open across the lake, that 
water has drag from the front of the boat to the back of the boat because it's completely into the water. It's on glass, like it's down into the water. Now, if that water had a little bit of ripple to it and that boat's hauling ass across that water, there's only certain spots on that water that's touching the bottom of the boat. So in theory, that boat is skipping across the chop. It, it's not dragging on a full bottom of water. So the same theory goes into an intake is that air is flowing into that saw and it's choppy. It's, it's bouncing across the tops of that roughness and it's atomizing the fuel, keeping it atomized at the same time. And if you look on the inside of your intake boots, sometimes you'll see um, little, you know, bumps in there. And that is for um, atomization in the intake side from your carburetor to your intake. Um, on your exhaust side, I always smooth my exhaust side up as much as I can. And that basically lets everything flow real nice out of the exhaust port. It keeps your carbon up and out of there. And you know, it's just, it's very appealing to look at a nice clean exhaust port. All your edges are nice. Get the light on it here. Sorry guys, it's hard to hold the light and everything. See, there's no sharp edges. Nothing there that's gonna catch anything. You wanna make sure everything is clean on these edges. You know, you don't want any kind of burrs or anything that's gonna catch. Intake side too, I'll take my little, my little dental tool that I got and I run it all around here to make sure nothing's gonna grab. But that is kind of a, a basic explanation of just clean up porting. It's just basically blueprinting what you got and cleaning up the castings. And that's what it could look like. And with the muffler mod and an intake, some air filter mods, the, the saws love it. They like to run. Um, and when they have these little castings and the intake, you know, is blocked off and stuff, they, they just don't get in no air. So it's just, it's just basic two stroke porting. There's no big magic to do when you're just building a work saw. I mean, you can get pretty wild. I've built a lot of stuff that's on the edge, but uh, I think you got to take it to the edge to know that sometimes it's not worth it to go to the edge. Sometimes it's better just to stay more on the milder side. The, the saws seem to run really well. So hope that, um, kind of explains a little bit of work saw porting and whatnot. There's a, there's like a ton of stuff we could go on about. Like there is all kinds of blowdown numbers and exhaust numbers and intake and, you know, transfer ports and doing different things in there. Um, finger porting, piston mods, like it, it just goes on and on and on. So we'll, we'll keep diving into this little by little. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to show you that and that's kind of just a basic build right there. Just deck the cylinder, I widened out the exhaust, I raised the exhaust on this saw probably about two degrees. But I did do some, uh, you know, decking of the cylinder. So I think this saw is sitting at like 97, 98. I haven't put it on the wheel yet, but it's somewhere in there. Nothing crazy. Just a basic work saw made to pull a 36 to 42 inch bar. And uh, it, longevity wise, with what I'm explaining on the top of the exhaust port and the curvature makes ring life last longer. So, so I keep wanting to throw more and more in because there's just so much to talk about. But one thing, if you're gonna port a saw, always pay attention to where the ring gap is. This is a 661 and you can see where I got that mark right there, it's coming really close to that ring gap. See that, that ring pin right there? You don't 
want to go super wide on that ring pin side on a 661 and you know the other upper ring is in the back on the intake side so there's no worries because the ring is solid all the way around but that one meeting in the front is a danger zone so whenever you're porting always look at the ring gaps and make note of where they're at because you could be you know hogging that port wider thinking you're doing great and when that saw starts to run that ring will just pop right out and she's done so just wanted to say that i know i didn't want to get too deep into this but always look where your ring gaps are and uh that those are pretty much the basics of just just making a, a good running saw and uh there's a lot to elaborate on all these little discussions and I'm sure you guys got lots of questions, but hope that helps you guys out if you wanted to mess around with your own stuff a little bit, but just be careful when you're doing it. You could uh, mess her up real bad, real fast. So just baby steps. Alrighty. Well, see you on the next video.